again and thank you for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather on the 24th day of April 2023. Uh, first, uh Satellite imagery showing uh, low pressure there in the Gulf of Alaska that had pushed a front across the panhandle earlier overnight last night. And that's now in the Northway Dawson Whitehorse area, extending over toward Watson Lake, weakening. Low pressure off the coast there, put, producing cloudy skies across the southeast coast up to the eastern North Gulf coast and into the Copper River Basin with some showers around. Otherwise, dry conditions with variable clouds over south central Alaska, mostly cloudy over the Copper River Basin and up through the eastern interior today. A lot of uh, clear skies out to the west and to the north. And up to the north there, you can see some clouds uh, dropping down toward the central and western Arctic coast, kind of veering off to the southwest there before they reach the coast. But there could be a little bit of moisture coming in with that later on, uh, but nothing significant. And then also out over the uh, southern Bering Sea, low pressure and a frontal system pushing eastward, uh, not really making any northward progress there. Most of the moisture staying south of St. Matthew Island, but definitely brought warmer temperatures into the Perbaloff Islands today with uh, some rain and rain into the eastern Aleutians becoming more showery in the afternoon. Just some scattered isolated showers with some sun breaks over the central and western Aleutians and rain and snow spreading into the Alaska Peninsula and uh, basically or it was dry over Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island and of course into the Cook Inlet and the Kenai Peninsula areas. And rolling that through again you can see that uh, northern portion of the front across the Bering Sea uh, just not really able to push any farther to the north. The main push off to the east there as new low center develops south of the Perbolos. On the uh, chart today, you can see uh two lows, one southwest of St. George Island, another one right over the Alaska Peninsula. That one associated with the main frontal boundary, bringing rain into that area, rain and snow, and uh, also showers over the eastern Aleutians, and then those became much more isolated out toward the west. And still a lot of clear skies over the western interior and the northern interior as well. Still gusty winds through the passes of the Brooks Range, but not as strong as they were over the weekend, and still pretty breezy over the northeast interior area. Areas, but again, not as strong as it was over the weekend. And uh, northeast winds, east northeasterly, still 15 to 25 miles an hour. A few areas higher elevation, seeing some higher gusts, but nothing uh, really heavy, either precipitation or wind wise, over the eastern interior. With areas of snow showers, snow, light snow, or flurries uh, from the Yukon River southward into the Copper River Basin, Prince William Sound, North Gulf Coast areas, and showery and cloudy over over the southeast coast. Still another trough off to your southwest there. We'll keep it unsettled uh, throughout tonight, tonight, and into tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, looking at the forecast for tonight, that trough approaching the coast, really weakening as approaches, but enough moisture with it. Keep it cloudy with uh, shower chances across all of the panhandle from Dixon entrance up to Lincoln on Glacier Bay. Risk of a shower or two around the Yakutat area, a little bit better chance as the flow becomes more southeasterly into the western North Gulf Coast. Rain and snow move into Kodiak Island and periods of rain and snow are in store for the Alaska Peninsula and Bristol Bay, even up into the southern Kuskokwim Valley. And clouds will increase over Cook Inlet and the Manuska Susitna Valley overnight tonight with increasing chances of snow showers, mainly over the mountainous terrain, uh, especially along the Alaska Range and along the Coast Range and the eastern Kenai Peninsula, western Prince William Sound locations. I'd see the best chance of some uh, moisture overnight tonight and uh, showers continue uh, with winds maybe 15 to 25 miles an hour for the eastern Aleutians out of the west. Lighter winds with uh, rain and snow showers for the Alaska Peninsula depending on your elevation. It stays dry up over the uh, western interior up to the north slope in the Arctic coast. Could be a few skiffs of snow just uh, clipping the central Arctic coast but nothing significant and maybe that won't even and 
uh, Ricci area there. Most of it may stay off to the north. And looking ahead to Tuesday. Still, chance of showers over the panhandle, especially over the northern areas, more scattered, maybe a break, some break or two over the southern southeast coast with uh, next system starting to push some rain up, mainly toward the Queen Charlotte Islands, but that low southwest of the Queen Charlotte will be tracking north northeastward overnight tomorrow night, so that'll spread more rain in over Tuesday night into the southern and eventually the central southeast coast. Otherwise, uh, for t uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, let's Let's go to Wednesday and we'll see uh, cloudy skies with a chance of showers across all of southern Alaska, either in the form of rain or snow, depending on your elevation and time of day. Uh, rain and snow showers possible along the North Gulf Coast and over the northern panhandle, again, uh, more scattered in nature to the southern southeast coast. And yet another system developing and will begin to spread some moisture up toward Kodiak Island late in the afternoon and for Wednesday evening. And out to the west, uh, Snow showers make a return to the Aleutians as the winds turn more northerly again, bring some colder air and snowfall levels back down to sea level from Chimianatu eastward, even into the Alaska Peninsula. Snow showers over the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta area, mostly south of the Yukon River out that way, and into the Kuskokwim Valley. Chance of snow showers as well as uh, along the Alaska Range into the Copper River Basin. Rain and snow showers uh, chance of for Cook Inlet, likely for the southern and eastern Kenai Peninsula and western Prince William Sound areas. Dry in the central interior, now a chance of snow showers exist along the Brooks Range, but those will be quite light, whatever does occur out that way. And uh, winds pretty light now, most everywhere. You can see a lot less gradient over the interior than what we've had, so winds becoming light and variable over the inland areas. And not all that strong over the Bering Sea or the Aleutians, and maybe a little breezy with southerly winds over the Panhandle. Lows tonight, 35 to 40 for the southeast coast, near 20 in the Copper River Basin, 10 to 20 in the Kuskokwim Valley, 20 to 25 for Bristol Bay, and mid 20s to lower 30s, south central Alaska, followed by highs in the 40s east of the Alaska Range in the 30s to the west, including Bristol Bay, highs in the 40s for the Panhandle and lows Wednesday morning. Not much change for the southeast coast, mid to upper 30s to near 40, and uh, lower 20s for the Copper River Basin and upper 20s to lower 30s, a little milder now for south central Alaska in the Susitna Manuska Valley as well as Kodiak Island, 20 to 25 for the Kuskokwim Valley and upper 20s for Bristol Bay. Highs in the 40s everywhere across southern Alaska on Wednesday afternoon and 45 to 50 over the southeast coast. Lows tonight anywhere from 5 to 10 over the central interior to 10 to 15 below for the Brooks Range and the central north slope areas and generally below zero again for the Arctic coast single numbers for the Seward Peninsula anywhere from run, 1 from Shishmaref to 10 for Nome. Highs above freezing for the Fairbanks area eastward and below freezing everywhere else followed by lows a little milder for Wednesday morning highs now reaching the 40s for the uh, central, upper Tanah Valley over toward Eagle and Northway and uh, lows tonight in the lower 20s for the Pribilofs and 30s elsewhere highs tomorrow mid 20s for the Pribilofs and 35 to 40 elsewhere followed by and now aviation weather around Alaska Flying weather Tuesday morning, a lot of VFR over interior Alaska. Some marginal VFR there along the eastern Alaska range, uh, westward to about uh, the northern Susitna Valley, and also some marginal VFR for the north slope. Otherwise, the panhandle has some VFR in the central areas and then marginal either side. North Gulf Coast, so VFR. Then the IFR out over Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, up to Kodiak Fognak Islands. And uh, otherwise, uh, a couple areas of uh, IFR there near Amchitka and then over the western bearing with marginal VFR farther north now into the Yukon Delta coast and creeping up towards St. Lawrence Island. And for the uh, afternoon Tuesday, uh, that area kind of uh, becomes VFR across St. Matthew Island to the Pribilofs in the afternoon. IFR, Togiak Bay up into the southern Kuskokwim Valley and a narrow band of IFR on the eastern slopes of the western Western Alaska Range down into Kamishak Bay 
and across the Barren Islands and into a bigger area that uh, encompasses uh, the western Gulf of Alaska on up to the central North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound area, Panhandle, VFR in the afternoon, and areas north of the Alaska Range, all VFR right out to the Arctic coast. And for Wednesday morning, IFR now progressing northward along the eastern border up to Eagle, past Eagle, up to the uh, Yukon River there. And uh, otherwise, VFR for the uh, Arctic coast all the way down to about the Alaska Range. Lower conditions across southern Alaska now from the Yukon Delta coast, Bristol Bay, and areas of IFR pretty well solidly entrenched for the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, and the Panhandle, marginal VFR out west for the Aleutians, and Western Alaska Peninsula, VFR for the Perloffs. And then for Wednesday afternoon, VFR, St. Paul, St. George Island, down to the Eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, and marginal VFR for Atka and areas to the west along the Aleutian chain. Some IFR for the Brooks Range there, otherwise VFR along just about all of the Yukon River Valley right out to the coast and some uh, IFR there still around Iliamna Lake, Kamishak Bay and the uh, eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range and the North Gulf Coast Mountain Range there and toward Yakutat. And for passes we've got uh, VFR for Anatovik and Adigan looking really good up to the north there for the Brooks Range and the northern interior. Lake Clark and Merrill though a marginal VFR possible IFR on both eastern entrance is rainy marginal VFR possible IFR in the eastern entrance and for windy marginal VFR Isabel occasionally marginal tomorrow and Mintesta VFR and then in toward Tanita we've got uh, marginal VFR in the forecast at times for Tanita lowest conditions on the eastern entrance possible IFR there as well and Portage IFR lowest conditions eastern entrance and for Chilkoot and White Looking really good. VFR for the afternoon on Tuesday. Freezing levels uh, roughly, well, definitely south of the Pribilofs, but north of the Aleutians and mostly Alaska Peninsula, cutting across Kodiak Island, up along or just south of the North Gulf Coast, and then southeastward across the central panhandle, 2,000 feet south of the uh, anywhere in the state. And for icing, we've got some areas of isolated moderate icing possible for the northern panhandle, Gulf of Alaska into Kodiak Island, and portions of northeast Bristol Bay into the Auckland uh, Mountains there, Dillingham, and uh, southern Kenai Peninsula, southern Cook Inlet, up into Prince William Sound, roughly between six to 12,000 feet, nothing too terribly heavy. And for the uh, jet stream, We've got the main jet south of the forecast area and northeast winds 90 knots now. That's west over the Chukchi Sea, so pretty light over the Bering Sea and into the mainland areas. About, uh, we'll call it 75 knots or so from the west southwest into the panhandle. And at 9,000 feet, uh, 45 knot winds there across southern Alaska into the northern Bering Sea. 3,000 feet, 35 knot east southeasterly across Iliamna Lake and southern Cook Inlet. 45 Five knots there into Prince William Sound and the North Gulf Coast, northwest across the Alaska Peninsula. And for turbulence, uh, a little choppy there showing up, a storm system approaching the southern panhandle, so look for the turbulence to increase in the afternoon along the coast of Prince Wells Island. Otherwise, light to isolated water turbulence, North Gulf Coast and South Central Alaska, the Alaska Peninsula, and the western Brooks Range into Long Mountain. this edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Carrie Hazley, Chief of the Emergency Services and Multimedia Branch for the National Weather Service in Anchorage. With me today I have Dr. Doug Wesley, a physical scientist for the National Weather Service Alaska Region Headquarters. Doug, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome, Carrie. Hello. Hello. So you're here to talk to us a little bit about something called COCORAS, which is the Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. And I understand that COCORAS is a network of volunteers who take weather observations. Can you tell us a little bit more about what COCORAS is? Yes, it, it began in the lower 48, oh, 20-some 20, 20 years ago, and it's expanded during those two decades. Uh, they're getting something like 10 to 15,000 rainfall reports per day from the lower 48. 
Wow, that's a lot of different reports. So how many reports do we get in Alaska right now? Well, you know, it varies. Uh, maybe 10 to 25, uh, but if you consider the large areas we're talking about, uh, we have a lot of gaps to fill. Uh, you know, any observation is better than no observation, but um, there are large areas in Alaska. Alaska covers uh, three, 3 million square miles. There's a lot of data gaps in that space, so we'd like to enhance it. Sure. So tell us then a bit about why these observations are so important to Alaska and, and why we need to expand the number of them that we're getting. Yes, Alaska, as, as you know, has large areas with a lot of complex terrain and there are no weather ob observing stations or radar. So Kokoraz can help fill the data gaps uh, so you can at least get some idea of what's actually falling from the sky at those locations. Kokoraz increases the amount of timely weather, weather observations available to meteorologists and other decision makers, especially in hazardous type of weather, uh, both rain and snow and, and, and the occasional hail storm that we get up here, uh, Kokoraz observations can help forecasters identify long-term precipitation and snowfall trends in, in a climate sense. And just overall, they increase the amount of timely weather observations available to the public. So then let's talk a little bit about each of the different types of observations. So it's the rain, hail, and snow network. So let's start by talking a little bit about rain observations and tell us a little bit about how you take those and how long it takes a volunteer to get a rain observation. Okay, this is a four inch gauge, uh, just, just the basic gauge, which you use for both rain and snowfall. Um, but the rain observations are, are pretty quick. It's a matter of two or three minutes that each volunteer goes out and takes a reading. And then uh, they enter these on the computer and they're immediately available uh, for, for observation on the computer um, and on the maps so that you can see, see your report. The, in the wintertime, it's a little bit more complicated um, we require the observers to measure not only the snow accumulation, but also the liquid equivalent. So they've got to melt the snowfall. This involves two of these gauges and a snowboard. And it's, you know, it, it's uh, maybe a 10 minute observation per day during the winter. But the snowfall is so variable that even across town and, and in especially remote areas, it's, uh, it's crucial that we increase this, this number of snow observations in the network. Right. I understand that we can only take observations in places where we have weather service offices. And so we rely on all of these volunteers to help us fill gaps. And it's also interesting to know how snowfall varies across like large spaces or even small cities. So I noticed here in Anchorage, for example, we can have a vastly different amount of snow on the east side of town and the west side of town. And so it seems like these observations would help us to better understand what's going on in places besides just where the office is. That's correct. Uh, you know, in any given snowfall, there are, there are typically large variances, as you know, and uh, you know we rely on reports from the public and from from National Weather Service cooperative spotters to to uh, map out the snowfall that occurs so that we can predict it better in the future. Sure. So we talked about rain observations and we talked about snow observations. And you said for each of those, um, if it's rain, it only takes a couple of minutes and then it can take about 10 minutes if it's snow. Hail was the other one that we didn't talk about yet. Tell us just a little bit about the hail observations that Kokoraz observers take. Yeah, the Kokoraz network, um, it, it has a hail pad and it's just a simple um, block of styrofoam covered with aluminum foil and you can approximate the size of hail by measuring the, the dent that the hail causes on the pad and this can give us an estimate of hail size. We don't get hail very often in Alaska but I've seen it two or three times in my five years in Anchorage and uh, and some of it up to a half inch. Uh, and I'm sure there's been larger hail up in the interior at times. So let's talk a little bit about how these uh, rain, hail, and snow observations can help forecasters. So we have people who forecast the weather, and we also have people who work on the hydrology side. And I can see that maybe Cocoa Rise will be beneficial to both of them. Can you tell us a bit more about that? 
Yes, uh, it's beneficial to to the hydro, hydrologic forecaster who's concerned about flooding and, and uh, rainfall is a, is comprises uh, uh, one of the causes of a flood and, or it can exacerbate high water conditions. So the more the hydrologist has to look at in terms of data from recent rainfall, the more information they have to work with when they're generating forecast. Um, you know, the, the weather forecasters in the wintertime uh, at the weather service office can use these observations also to, to help with past case studies, to, to verify model data, and to get a handle on, on what's actually happening out the window. And that's important in the forecast process. Yeah, it seems like you can never have too much information when you're you're issuing a forecast. So it only takes a few minutes most of the time to take these observations. So let's say I'm interested in becoming a volunteer for Cocoraz. How do I get involved? Yeah, the, the website is very useful, cocoraz.org, and uh, it has a number of video-based uh, training um, tutorials that take you right on from, from measuring rainfall to a video tutorial on measuring snowfall. Um, it, it has the maps available in real time and you can go back and look at that, that old data too through those maps. And so it's a very useful comprehensive website. Very interesting and anybody can get involved, right? You don't have to be a meteorologist. That's right. And, you know, we, we love to have 24, uh, well, once a day reports throughout the year, but if you can't, then, then so be it. And uh, we have observers, some observers are out of town for periods of time, or um, maybe maybe they, they can only re report, uh, you know, a week or two of precipitation, but it's still useful. It's still data that we look at. So uh, the more the better, but, but you can get involved even if you, you aren't at a location. 24-7. Uh, Doug, I really appreciate you coming on to our program today to talk about Coco Raz. Hopefully we can have you back in the studio at some point so we can talk more about it and then talk more about the different types of observations and the tools that observers use. Um, that would be great, yeah. So thank you for your time and thank you so much for joining this edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And now, marine weather around Alaska. On to coastal water forecast for tomorrow on the south coast, south winds 15 knots. And for the north coast, uh, south to southeast winds 20 to 30 knots. Lynn Canal, southeast winds 15 knots. Stevens Passage, southeast winds 15 knots. And for Clarence Strait, south winds at 15 knots. And then for the day on Wednesday, Pick it up to 20 knots for the inside waters with Lynn Canal looking at a southerly direction on those 20 knot winds. Same thing for Stevens Passage, south winds 20 knots, seas 4 feet, and southeast 20 knots for Clarence Strait with 7 foot seas. Otherwise, on the south coast, west winds 30 knots, seas 15 feet, and for the uh, north coast, east to southeast winds 20 to 25 knots. Prince William Sound tomorrow, small craft advisories, east winds 30 knots, sea 7 feet. And for the uh, eastern North Gulf Coast, east southeasterlies at 30 knots, west side, southeast at 20. And for the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay, look for southeast winds at 25 knots. Cook Inlet, northeast winds 20 to 25 knots. For Wednesday, Prince William Sound, easterlies at 20 knots, eastern North Gulf Coast, wind southeast 30 knots, east 25 knots for the western North Gulf Coast, and Barren Island, southeast 25 knots, Kamishak Bay, east at 20 with 7-foot seas. Cook Inlet, northeast winds 15 to 20 knots. Kodiak Island, east southeast winds 20 knots for Tuesday. And for the Alaska Peninsula, southwest winds 20 to 25 knots with five to nine foot seas. Bristol Bay, southeast winds 20 knots with two foot seas. And for Wednesday, Bristol Bay, north winds 15 knots. North to northwest winds 15 knots for the Alaska Peninsula. And Kodiak Island, south to southeast winds 15 knots. Eastern Aleutians, west winds 30 knots tomorrow for Tuesday. Adak and Atka, west winds 20 knots. And west northwest winds 15 to 20 knots for the western Aleutians. And for the day Wednesday, 
Western Aleutians, west northwest winds 25 to 30 knots, central areas northwest at 20, and for the eastern Aleutians, uh, north to west winds at 20 to 25 knots. And for the southwest coast, winds will be northeast on Tuesday, 15 to 20 knots. And for St. Matthew Island, north winds 20 knots, sea 7 feet. St. Paul and St. George, north winds 15 knots, sea 7 feet. And for uh, St. Lawrence Island, northeast winds 15 knots, but Norton Sound will be seeing winds from the northeast at 20 knots. <clears throat> And for Wednesday, Norton Sound and St. Lawrence Island looking at a northeast breeze at about 15 knots. And uh, the Yukon Delta Coast, northeast winds at 10 knots. Cuscombe Delta Coast, south of Nunavak Island, winds mostly northwest at about 10 knots and seas in the ice free waters of only one foot. Pribilofs, variable winds at 10 knots with five foot seas. And for St. Matthew Island, winds will be north at 25 knots, seas running about six feet. And up uh, to the north there, from Wales to Cape Thompson, winds northeast 15 to 30 knots. Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, northeast winds 15 to 25 knots. And for the western Arctic coast, northeast winds 15 knots. Really light winds for the central coast at about five knots or less. And uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, east winds 10 to 15 knots. And moving on to Wednesday, Start for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, uh, winds still east, 10 to 15 knots, and the central Arctic coast, winds east at about 10 knots. West side, south winds 10 knots, and then from Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, northerly winds at about 20 knots, and Cape Thompson to Wales, north winds 15 to 20 knots. And for tonight, again, look for uh, increasing clouds with increasing chances of uh, precipitation uh, across southern Alaska, Kenai Peninsula area especially on the east and southern side, Prince William Sound, especially western Prince William Sound, and possibly in the Copper River Deep Basin, but most likely along the Alaska Range. Kind of showery for the Panhandle, but nothing heavy at all in the way of wind or precipitation there. Look for some moisture to move into Kodiak Island. Look for areas of snow over Bristol Bay. Snow showers for the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians. And uh, for tomorrow, Cloudy skies with a chance of uh, rain or snow showers across all of southern Alaska. And same thing for the Panhandle. Otherwise dry over the northern interior areas and kind of showery over the Aleutians. Risk of some snow shower activity over the Pribilof Island, Central Bering Sea. And the next day about... These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.